In mid-1984, Courtney returned to Portland, looking for a fresh start. It wasn't long before she heard about a new girl in town, a girl in a band. I met Courtney at the Satyricon Club in Portland, Oregon, and I liked her. She was really vivacious. And she said, oh, I want to meet you. You have to be in a band with me and just everything, spilling everything out at once. Courtney's musical chops didn't match her desire for rock stardom. She did not play an instrument at the time. <laughs> I mean, she kind of did, if you count, like, playing keyboards, like, ding, 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 playing. She tried to strum, I mean, she could hear it in her head, but she couldn't play it. So she'd hum it to me and I'd transpose it. Courtney and Kat decided that Portland was too tired for their rock and roll dreams. At one point she just goes, we have to go to San Francisco. I know there's going to be, like she had this feeling, a big music explosion. It's either going to be in San Francisco or Seattle. They picked San Francisco. In June 1985, Courtney and Kat loaded up a U-Haul and headed south. Me and Courtney lived in this house that I found in the paper. It was on Fillmore and Oak. It's just a really big flat, empty, like you could roller skate in there. And I'm like, we dumpster dive and put dead flower, semi-dead flowers in our apartment. And it was really fun, magical time. Courtney knew a girl in LA named Jennifer Finch. Courtney invited her to come to San Francisco to form a band. I really liked Jennifer. She couldn't really play. One really cool thing she did do, though, she didn't take any from Courtney. I, she threw her bass at her, like she just went and threw her bass. Courtney was running, you know, and she, and she almost hit her, but, you know, she slammed the door shut just in time, and the bass went bang! I remember it was so cool. The girls had plenty of chemistry, but not much discipline. We just played two gigs. It was more like a concept. We took lots of pictures. We were just, like, having fun with, like, it was, like, pretend, sort of. There was nothing pretend about it for Courtney. This was the first step. You know how you dream and plot and dream and plot, but the weird thing is, is I had songs and she had ideas. So that was a good, like, you know, team, but I don't know. There's not much to say, really. I'm just, I like playing music and she likes being famous. The band dissolved and the summer of 1985 turned dreary for Courtney. While Courtney flirted with Hollywood, Kat B. Elland was off to Minnesota, home to some of the hottest underground bands around. So I moved to Minneapolis because I heard like Soul Asylum and Who's Could Do and the replacements were from there and lots of garage stuff. So I split when she was trying out for Sydney Nancy. I just kind of took off sneakily. I just didn't want to play with her anymore. It was too high drama. And so I just wanted to go play garage music and she wanted to be more pop. But Courtney didn't get the hint. When Kat formed a new band with drummer Lori Barbero, Courtney showed up too. Kat called the band Babes in Toyland. Things were great until the girls started to jam. Courtney came out, practiced once with us or twice on bass, which was probably not her instrument anyway. And then she stayed a little bit longer and a bunch of crap happened and she split back to LA, I guess. So when Kat B. Ellen called in the summer of 1987 with an offer to rejoin Babes in Toyland, Courtney hopped on a plane for Minneapolis. See, I don't remember this, but I probably did say, why don't you come out to Minneapolis and play and see how it goes? And I enjoyed her company there, but she has this weird tendency to take over, you know? A bunch of alpha bitches in one room is not a fun thing. Courtney and Kat split again. Resourceful as ever, Courtney created a plan to make money promoting rock concerts. She was really quite good at hustling and getting people excited about things and promoting. So she got a whole bunch of bands, including the Butthole Surfers, to come and play this show. And it was at the Orpheum, this really beautiful theater, you know, like where plays are put on and stuff. But the show bombed. And she ran out of town, back to LA. Totally depressed. I remember Courtney leaving on the plane really fast. She ended up back in LA where she heard about a profitable dancing gig up in Alaska. So she went up to Alaska, absolutely hated it. And the only thing she, nice she had to say about it was she could see the Northern Lights. For three months, Courtney danced topless, wrote in her journal, and spoke to no one. In the endless night of the Alaskan winter, Courtney had an epiphany she would return to the scene and become a rock star.